Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of Five Minute EMS Review, where we give you short and to the point videos on different EMS topics. Today, I wanna to talk about CPR electrodes and why you may wanna reconsider your pad placement configuration. Let's get started. All right, guys, so obviously there are multiple different types of cardiac monitors out there, and there's different types of CPR electrodes as well. But for those of you using the Zoll CPR stat pads, I want to talk about why you might need to reconsider your pad placement. So I don't know about you, but if you're like where I work, our go-to CPR pad placement is the apex lateral and sternum configuration. That is, we place one electrode left lateral over the apex of the heart, and we place another electrode right lateral sternum. If you dig into the recommendations from Zoll, this is a perfectly acceptable configuration. However, I would suggest that it might benefit us to consider using the apex front and back configuration. Let's take a look at the two configurations and see if we can break down why. So, the apex lateral and sternum configuration is recommended for defibrillation and ECG monitoring. It is not recommended for non-invasive pacing since the configuration can lead to decreased patient tolerance and increased capture thresholds. So if you wanna use this configuration for defibrillation, that's great, just keep those factors in mind. To set it up, you will apply the sternum electrode to the right upper torso lateral to the sternum and the apex lateral electrode so that the top of the gel treatment area aligns with the bottom of the pectoral muscle on a male patient. In the event that you're using it on a female patient, you should position the electrode so that it is underneath the breast. Now, here's why I would suggest you consider the apex front and back configuration. Not only is it recommended for defibrillation and ECG monitoring, but it is also recommended for non-invasive pacing and ventricular cardioversion. It is optimal for pacing because it increases patient tolerance and it decreases capture thresholds. So it's gonna make it easier for us to obtain that capture that we're looking for. Now, keep in mind that these recommendations only address cardioversion of ventricular rhythms. Zoll actually has a technical note out there that addresses cardioversion of the atria separately. So I'll leave a link to the PDF for atrial cardioversion in the notes section, and uh, you can check out how they recommend pad placement if you're trying to cardiovert an atrial rhythm. Now, to achieve the apex front and back configuration, separate the CPR puck from the electrode that is normally placed lateral sternum. Take that CPR puck, put it over the sternum as usual, uh, where we get that CPR data feedback and then take the electrode that normally would go lateral sternum and place it on the back to the left of the spine, just below the scapula at heart level. Take the apex front electrode and position it over the cardiac apex so that the nipple falls under the adhesive area on a male patient, but not under the gel treatment area. So we're, we're going a little more anterior, a little bit less lateral on this uh, configuration, and we're bringing that pad up just a little bit. We want to actually capture that nipple underneath the adhesive area, but keep it off of the treatment gel so that it doesn't get zapped with that electricity. For a female patient, again, make sure that the electrode ends up underneath the breast. So here's the rub. Have you ever placed your defibrillation pads in the apex lateral sternum configuration, achieved ROSC, and then needed to pace the patient post ROSC. If you have, you know the hassle of having to adjust your pad positioning to achieve the optimal apex front and back configuration. So why not set up your pads in that position from the get-go? Not only will you have what you need for defibrillation during CPR, but in the event that you achieve ROSC and need to pace, you won't have to change your pad positioning. In addition, for those of you working in systems where dual sequential and double simultaneous defibrillation are an option for refractory ventricular rhythms, you will now be able to apply that second set of pads in the apex lateral and sternum configuration without having to log roll your patient to get to their back. If ventricular cardioversion becomes necessary, you are still in an ideal configuration. 
if atrial cardioversion becomes necessary, you can apply another set of pads as indicated in that Zoll technical note that we mentioned, but you won't have to log roll the patient to do it. You'll have access to their entire front to get that in place. Now, placing your pads in the apex front and back position from the get-go is still going to require that log roll movement initially to get to the patient's back to place that, that back electrode. But it will be a one and done movement that may save you hassle down the road. It should be taken into account, however, that high quality chest compressions and early defibrillation are critical to successful CPR. We all know that. So adequate manpower and proper coordination will be necessary to make sure that you can achieve that apex front and back pad placement initially without compromising on your CPR quality. So take into consideration that under certain circumstances, you may simply have to just place those pads in that uh, anterior lateral and sternum positioning to start with. That might just be your, your most ideal positioning to achieve your high quality CPR and that early defibrillation that you're looking for. Maybe it is that you just haven't trained with the crew and you don't feel confident to get that coordinated movement of the patient to get those pads placed, or maybe uh, your crew is just not familiar with uh, different types of pad placements. Whatever it is, uh, just keep in mind that this is a suggestion for your pad placements, but ultimately we've got to do what we need to do to get that high quality CPR and early defibrillation. But if you can train and you can coordinate your actions in such a way that that apex front and back position is your go-to configuration, you may save yourself some headache further down the patient treatment process. So I hope that was helpful. Hope it gives you something to think about. Take it back to your crews, talk about it, see what you guys can come up with. Maybe do a little bit of training to see uh, how feasible it is and, and give me some feedback. Leave some comments below. I'd love to hear from you. If you're just tuning into the channel for the first time, we appreciate having you. We'd love it if you'd share with anybody else that you think may find the content interesting and hit that subscribe button. Uh, we, we love hearing from, from new folks and it helps us out. Uh, until the next one, Keep an eye out. We'll have another one ready for you shortly and tune in. We'll see you then.